Hey everyone, welcome back to the Primal Blueprint Podcast. If you're listening to this, it is also a video interview. Both links are in the show notes. Today we have a repeat offender, one of my favorite people, Tara Garrison, coach taragarrison.com. She is a high performance coach and also a keto expert, all around health expert and personal trainer, really knowledgeable. She also has a podcast called Inside Out Health with Tara Garrison, where she interviews people and it's really a wonderful show as well. And she is also my co-host for the Kick-Ass Life podcast, where we talk every week about things to improve your life on a multitude of levels. Welcome back. How you doing? Gosh, it's just, it's so weird to be on a podcast interview with you, Elle. Just, <laughs> <laughs> we just did this yesterday. I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here on Primal Blueprint and talk to my people, yeah. all my like-minded people out there. <laughs> I, I love the way you look at so many things and so many comments. I mean, I've actually watched a lot of interviews with you as well uh, in the past. And I, I still do. I still continue to love to watch them. I always learn something. You know, right now, you know, we're we're in the throes of January, a time when people are either by the winter trappings of weather they gained a lot of weight. They're feeling garbage. They didn't get to exercise. Plus we've got the pandemic. So, you know what I mean? So I'm sure over the winter, a lot of people probably did a lot worse than they would in other years. And this is just the time of year to like, you know, new you, right. You know, new self, like if anything has taught us uh, the past last year, it's that we need to do everything we can to get our immune system and our health in tip top shape so that we can survive pandemics and things or flus or whatever it is out there. But I think this is really just keyed in on everyone's health. So we're going to talk a lot about that today. I guess I would just, let's start off, even though you've been on the podcast before, let's start off and talk about how, like you were the classic uninformed on health in every way person. Like there's no oh, yeah. one that was, I, have, I don't think I've even met anyone that was more uninformed at one point than you were, right? <laughs> so, right? Which I love because you were the opposite now. So tell us about when you didn't know stuff, what your diet was like, what you thought health was, what you, you know, give us a rundown. Yeah, actually, I mean, I know you're in these communities, L, but there's a ton of people out there like me. Like I was what I would consider normal American, right? Normal American. And, you know, I, I love that you, I gotta say, I love that you pulled out like, this new year, new you thing, because I love that 2020 ended with a zero because it was ground zero for a lot of people, (laughs) seriously. And ground zero, as so many of us know, who have had major transformations, major personal awakenings, ground zero is the best worst thing that ever happens to you because it gets you to look at your stuff and it gets you to change. So this is 2021. This is year one day. That's what I tell my clients all the time. They they send me some texts and they're like, this is the lightest I've been since I like got married or like, I you know, and I'm like day one, baby, you just started like, cause I don't want them getting into this mindset of like, I did it when they're not even close to where they're trying to get. Right. So that's, that's it. 2021 year one, baby, let's go, let's start over. So I love, I love that, um, that concept of like, like, let's, let's start with a brand new you for real, right? If we can continue to look at it that way, we can continue to expand in a way that we never thought possible. So I'll share it with, you know, if anybody doesn't know me, um, I, I mean, what else saying is so true. Like I was, you know, as an adult living that fast food, Burger King, Taco Bell, McDonald's, you know, that was a normal multiple times a week thing with, as a mom of little kids, that's where I was bringing my kids. Um, at home, it was macaroni and cheese, peanut butter and jelly, grilled cheese sandwiches, ramen noodles, hot dogs, potato chips, dip, brownies, cookies, like all of it. Right. And healthy was like, you have a salad with dinner, but everything else is like (laughs) pretty much standard American garbage. Right. And then for exercise, chronic cardio, that's it. That's all I knew was just go run. so So you were running, run, run. That's it. And sometimes I would go to workout classes with my friends. Right. And that was pretty, and there are a lot of people living that way and you don't think you are right. They don't, I did, wouldn't, if you were like, Oh, you eat like pretty unhealthy. Then I'd be like, no, like I eat like, like, you know, Turkey sandwich and, um, like, <laughs> But it was, it was like unhealthy crap all day long. It was just this total denial of it, like no awareness. So for me, yeah, going through that change that, that I've had multiple ground zeros in the last five years, I'll put it that way. But the first ground zero ground zero for me was actually marriage problems to be very vulnerable where it kickstarted me into this feeling of not enoughness. I've got to change my body in order to be attractive enough for my husband, this whole thing. And I share that because I have listened to so many high achievers. I'm obsessed with personal development, growth, anything that expands life now through a series of events I've been through. And I hear so many times that these people who are living life at a whole nother level started with a very unhealthy catalyst, like something broke them, something broke, 
right? And that that breaking, that ground zero, that falling apart, that unhealthy catalyst can sometimes, I think, my opinion is that it's there to help turn our course of direction because we're so like set in our ways, right? Until sometimes something happens that's so catastrophic to our lives that it breaks us and we, and we change our past. And for me, that has definitely been the case because what started as a unhealthy drive of, oh my gosh, I have to lose weight. I have to look better. You know, I think a lot of people have been down that road. It quickly shifted into this, uh, love for and respect and honoring of the human body as I learn more about mine. And then as I was able to look at my own spiritual crap and realize that I had a lot of growing to do. And it, honestly, I just have to say like, if you cannot own in, in yourself that you have a lot, a long way to go, like you're kidding yourself, you're holding yourself back so much because like, we are not even close to like the divinity that I believe that we are. Right. So this whole track, this whole trajectory of like coming off of that standard American lifestyle and just thinking running and workout classes were the only thing there for me and really diving into my own power, changing the foods that I ate, building more muscle. That was the gateway to personal awakening for me. So that is why I'm so passionate about it. And anybody who's experienced that where you were eating crap food and now you've shifted into whole nutritious, wonderful food. I mean, it's hard to not get fanatical about it because of the level of existence that you're living versus what you were living before. What you thought was normal now is like, looks like prison. (laughs) <laughs> it looks like depression and sadness and a small living in smallness compared to nonstop energy, going after everything you want in life, making all your dreams come true, tapping into your spiritual power, uh, like living in a body that you never thought was possible. That's pretty cool. That's pretty that cool. That must be so <laughs> cool for you because you know what I love is some of the pictures that you have on your Instagram and everyone it's at coach Tara Garrison. We'll put everything in the show notes to connect with her, but you know, you've got some past before and after pictures. There's pictures of you when you just got done with marathon. You like, again, this is what a lot of people think is that chronic mm-hmm. cardio. Like I'm going to run, I'm going to put in the miles because that's, what's going to burn the fat. The faster they go, the more I sweat, the harder it is. Now, most of our audience who's listening to this already knows this concept of chronic cardio and why it doesn't mm-hmm. do it. But Mm -hmm. give us a snapshot for the people that Mm -hmm. might know in layman's terms as to why all the running in the world ain't going to get you where you need to go. Because you're only getting the benefit during the exercise. That's it. So you're now imprisoned to constantly having to do that exercise in order to maintain any sort of normal body weight that sucks. I don't want anybody to have to live like that. And also you can start to, if you're doing a lot of long distance running, which I was, you can start to lower your testosterone and increase estrogens. And now you're getting a dis an unfavorable hormone cascade. That's you're like, why am I gaining weight? I run more than anybody I know. And I just keep gaining weight. Well, you just put your hormones in a place that's going to cause you to keep doing that. And it's for me, that was it. Right. So my mom was a a pioneer of women's running. I did have a, a, an intro at least to some concepts of higher level performance from my mom. Cause she had some of the best coaches in the world, went to the Olympic trials in 1968 women's running was so new. They didn't even have her event yet. She had to run a different event. She didn't make it to, to the Olympics, but she still was like a world-class, um, athlete. And for, for for me, that was my only intro into any sort of athletics. I grew up very poor. I had like, I was like, you know, even us, I'm 38. Um, like growing up, like people didn't go to gyms, like a little bit, maybe there was the YMCA or something, but like, that wasn't a thing. That's a, this kind of a new thing in our lifetime. Right. Yeah. So it is, like, it really is new. Nobody was doing that. They were doing the jogging and the running and stuff if they were doing right. anything at all, but no maybe one was tennis? like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like there wasn't like a gym schedule. Like this is a new thing in a lot of our, our lifetimes. And so you take that on top of being a woman where I didn't, it's not like I was playing football or wrestling or some sort of sport where they're teaching me how to lift weights. Pretty much all of us women are walking into that gym. Like, I don't know how to do any of this crap. Like, I don't know how any of this works as a free I'm walking on Mars right now. (laughs) Like, what do you do with that? Okay. Why? Okay. That doesn't feel like a workout to me. That's not fun. I'm like, okay, move that 10 times in a row. Okay. So, so it was such a learning curve, but 
what, what happened, what happened for me is as I started to marvel at the human body and started to understand that I could learn new skills that I could put myself out there in front of other people at the gym and not know what I'm doing. And that's okay. And be willing to suck at something for a minute and get better and keep and wear a stupid outfit. And who cares? So what you're fat right now, you're wearing t-shirts, that's right. who cares? Just got to get over yourself and get in uh-huh. there. Mm-hmm. I had, I had a very distinct moment. Um, and I love to share this story for anybody who's like, letting their ego block them from getting what they want. Honestly, this is what happens every time. Okay. Cause the fear of what other people think is one of the greatest fears human beings have, right? There, there is a primal instinctual aspect to that, right? Like you don't want to be ostracized from the community or whatever. So sometimes we, yeah. So sometimes we let that imprison us from getting what we really want and going after it. So, um, for me, yeah, going to the gym and my like freaking old, free t-shirt and my ex-husband's basketball shorts. <laughs> like that's not cool. Right. I was not in my Lulu outfits that I'm rocking now. Right. I was not cool at all. And I was overweight and I had no idea what I was doing. And I'm in there with a bunch of people that really look like they know what they're doing. Guess how much your ego likes that zero. Your ego likes that zero. <laughs> it does not feel good, but I had this moment and I just, I, I wanted to cry. I was in there lifting and I just like, I'm looking around, I was at Lifetime Fitness, which is a little bit more the uppity, you know, <laughs> more wealthy gym or whatever. And I'm, everybody's just like dressed to the nines and their cool outfits and their muscles. And, and I was looking around like, God, like, I just, I don't fit in here. I like this sucks. It doesn't feel good. I feel like an idiot. I'm embarrassed. And I just, I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, everybody starts somewhere. All these people started somewhere. Watch me, watch me watch me. I'm coming. Goosebumps. I love it. <laughs> and I was, and it's, it's funny. Cause I still work out at that, at that lifetime fitness. And I had this moment. Um, <laughs> it's going to make me sound really vain. L I'm just going to be real. I was like, it was just, you know, those days, sometimes you have a really good day at the gym where you're like, dang, I don't know what happened with like my water balance or my salt or my carbohydrates or what, but I'm looking good today. Yeah. I look freaking ripped and shredded and lean. So I was having one of those days and I was like lifting And I was in that same spot. I was right in that same spot, looking in that mirror. And I was like, it was just this like, dang girl, good job. Like good for you. You know, like you push, you did do it. You said you were going to do it and you did it. Like here you are, you know? And I, I love to share that story because if anybody's like, if you're on that path right now, like you're working towards it, like, which kind of we all are. Cause you, there's no, there's no end. <laughs> there's no after picture. But if you're like in that same place as me, where you're like, I know I have more potential than this. Like, I know I'm going to get there. Like, please keep going. And that's literally all it is, is just keep going, keep learning, keep trying, keep Keep willing to be wrong. Uh, keep willing, be willing to try new things, experiment. Uh, don't get into dogma. Don't just because something worked really well for the person next to you and you keep trying it, it's making you feel like crap and it's not flowing with your life and you can't do just like, let shift, let that go and just keep going because you will get there. There's no freaking reason that you can't. It's only limiting my self-limiting mindsets are the only thing that will keep you back from getting there. You know, what, well, and what I love about you too, is that there were so many people in the the paleo keto mindset space who have never been fat. Yeah. They've never been, they've never struggled really ever. They might've been on a different eating paradigm, but they just don't know what it's like. You understand what it's like. You, you completely oh, yeah. understand. And you're also a great example of A to Z and that you can do it. I mean, I remember hearing you talk about how like the only two exercises you knew were just take the dumbbells up to the side and up to the front. Like yeah. you didn't even know how to do a bicep curl. You were just yeah. like, I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing. All and right. to see your body now and where it's at. And you know, one of the things I've learned over time and you know, Brad and Mark have said this to me years ago, they were like, they're like, you can hike all you want. You can walk all you want. It's not going to do anything. It's no, because you're not creating. Do- you're not it's creating not, a- and it's really the truth and i i don't want it to be you know i didn't want it to be true damn it because i could high for like I, that's great but it doesn't do it you have to get into the weight bearing exercises for a million reasons let's a million get reasons. into why weights are important why are important and you have to do it for for body composition and for life Oh yeah. I mean, not, not to undermine the walking in nature walk, walking is amazing. Please do all the walking walk, but you got to do a little more than that. If you want things to be easier for you, because you have to one, create a stimulus for change in your body that requires your body to release the hormones necessary in order to create growth. And one of those hormones is growth hormone. And I tell my clients all the time, I'm like, growth hormone is like the magic pill. Growth hormone helps you build muscle and burn fat. What do every single, what does every single person on the planet want to do is grow muscle and burn fat. Even if they don't think they want to grow muscle, they do because muscle is what one 
obviously on a, like a self-loving level is going to protect your body like crazy and help you have energy long-term protects your bones, protects your ligaments. Um, on a vanity level, it gives you an amazing shape and trust me, like, I don't know if you're watching the video version, like I've got like some biceps here or whatever, but like, I don't look, I don't feel like my arm looks like some crazy psycho, um, muscle woman, but when I'm in the gym, it does. <laughs> when I'm in the gym, guys will be like, whose arms bigger, hers or mine? Like I, it looks ridiculous. <laughs> like, and I'm like, I hate you right now. Just, <laughs> I'm not trying to look bigger than guys. I'm not going after that, but I do like to be strong and I do like to lift. And I love the mindset benefit that I get out of it. Plus I'm creating a hormone cascade that's favorable to my body. I'm increasing all the hormones that help me stay, have good weight maintenance, not to mention your metabolic rate will slightly increase when you have more muscle and you just have more energy to get things done. That was the biggest thing. And I, this is why I went into training, honestly, was because I, as a stay at home mom forever, I remember having the day where I realized, holy crap, I have so much more energy. Now I was running up and downstairs and I was like, I want other women to know what that feels like. Um, and so that is why I went into training. I didn't know that through a series of events at that time that the universe was going to be like, Oh, you want to help women get strong. Oh, you're going to have to face a lot more of your demons than just the fitness one girl. So I had to go through a lot of, um, uh, leaving my major religion, getting divorced, going through a really unhealthy relationship, learning all my pleasing codependent, playing small behaviors, going through intense personal development. I still have two coaches that I go to every single week. So I'm, I'm not stopping anytime soon. I love digging into the mindset piece because, listen, like, okay, <laughs> let's say you've never been fat. Well, what, what, what's your thing? What you got going on? What's what you break relationships all the time, or you lie, or you're dishonest, or like, what's your thing? Because we all, none of us, none of us escaped childhood unscathed. All of us came out of that with wounds. Um, I'm rereading the mastery of love by Don Miguel Ruiz right now. And he talks about that's, that's how he, that's the premise of the whole book is how we all have wounds and we all act in certain ways in our lives to try to help cope with those wounds that have not yet been healed. So this is why I love the mindset can be. So I, my, my coaching business called hire women who rise and I do it for women specific. Well, I do it for women. Cause I've been instructed to by a force that's bigger than me, first of all, but <laughs> I also do it because I find, I find a lot of men are very hungry for personal development. I find like all the, the men that I talk to, they kind of like, they're kind of on that board. Maybe they've ventured with plant medicines or they've like hired mindset coaches, or they've done sort of program. I don't find as many women in that space. And frankly, I'm kind of tired of hearing guys talk about their ex-wife, ex-girlfriend, whoever, who just wasn't there on the mindset component. I'm like, okay, well, let's help the women catch up then. <laughs> so that's, that's what we're doing is, is the mindset piece. And for me that, I mean, that was everything, right? Like when you're overcoming, if something's not going well in your life, whether it's your weight or your finances or relationships, or you just feel like hopeless despair, disconnection from anything bigger than you, it is honestly because you have not been willing to dive into the mindset component, the spiritual component of what you're doing there. And that's, that's what changed the game for me with weight, right? Like I had to change all these mindsets so that what I perceived was normal was different. <laughs> right. So right. that's, that's my favorite part of this whole game. I want to get into the mindset stuff, but just real quick, I want to top off the, the weight training thing. Um, sure. Cause I, you know, cause I know you've gotten this, you've talked about it before where people come to you and they'd be like, like, I, you look really good. And, but I just, I don't <laughs> like, I don't want to be as buff as you. Right. Yeah. Like, so they might see your body and be like, well, I, I mean, I'm not, yeah, but that's not, yeah, and yeah. I, I, I say, love your I'd response like, to it. Tell us what your response is. Like, my response is, <laughs> my response is, I'd like to see you try. <laughs> I'd like <laughs> right, to see right, right. you try to build as much muscle as me because you have no freaking idea how, like, my life uh, being real, like, basically revolves around health and fitness, right? It's my profession. Oh, not only that, but I love it. Like, I bloodthirst right. for it. Like, I, I don't miss the gym like ever, <laughs> right? Like I will miss other things so that I can go to the gym. It is a major priority for me because it brings me so much joy. So I actually have you to You don't like, have to be Tara to get the results you want is what I guess the point I'm making. Yeah. Is, that, is then that's what the people are worried about. They're like, oh, well, my God, if she's working on this hard over there, but I don't want to be that. And you're like, you don't, you don't have to do everything Tara does and be in the gym every day. 
and I can't as a good coach, like I can't put you at the level that I'm at because my body <laughs> is so highly trained for this already that I can't, I can't, I would run you into the ground if I put you on the exact same regimen that I'm on, yeah. unless you're already a very, very advanced lifter. You do a lot of high intensity interval training, lots of conditioning. Um, also I do a system called neurotyping with my clients and my particular neurotype handles a lot of volume and recovers really well. I've always known that about myself. I've never had an experience in which an, a workout ran me into the ground that I felt like I couldn't go the next day. I don't even know what that feels like. Like that's, I don't operate like that. Like I get enough sleep, boom, good to go again. Right. But not everybody's wired that way. Right. So as a coach, that's my job is to look at all the components that are coming into a person and, and take a look at that. And some of us do build muscle easier than others based on some of our neurochemical cascade. Do we have high acetylcholine? Do you, um, how do you process proteins? Some of us can, build muscle easier than others. So when people tell me that I'm like, please just, especially women, I'm like, just try as hard as you can to build muscle because you don't realize how hard it actually is. Right. right. There are a lot of women out there that actually want to be super buff and they struggle to get there after, even though they are very diligent, they eat tons of protein, everything's on point. They're trying so hard and they still can't get there. So like, I, I hate this one foot in one foot out approach to building muscle because it holds people back from getting the results that they want. Just go in there and try to build as much muscle as you freaking can. And then you will get your results that you're after because you're going to increase like your there's transporters in your muscles called glute four transporters. When you work them out hard enough, they will activate and pull in glucose into your muscles. So it's not going to fat storage. You, you're also going to increase growth hormone. You want to be able to like work hard enough that you're activating. Think about that. Like, did I go in there and crush it hard enough that I activated something in my body to create a, a hormone release, to create, um, a necessary, uh, immune system response, frankly, to build more muscle. Did I do that? Or did I just go through some motions in there? And you know, the feeling like if you, you know, when you walk out, I'm, and you guilty, I'm guilty of that. So I'm, I'm so guilty of that. On, on many it happens. Of that. Yeah. It happens. But you're, all but of you're us. right. You've got to put a hard demand for yeah. the body to go, oh, we need to change some shiz up over here because this girl is, wow, right? And, and, You've got to respond to this. Totally. And what, what women in particular, I see that they fail to realize about that that doesn't mean how long you put that demand on your body. Women want to go not so intense for a really long time. That is a recipe for running your body into the ground. That is not a, a an intelligent way to train. I say, get the stimulus and get out of there, right? So go in, put your phone down, close your eyes, do whatever you got to do. I always tell my clients, like, I'm like, whatever muscle we're working, let's say we're doing biceps. I'm like, you, the, close your eyes. Your biceps are the only muscle in your entire body right now. It is the only thing that can work like, and will it to grow, like be like, grow, let's go. Come on. Like that intention also yeah. needs to be there. Otherwise you're going to be avoiding it a little bit. Your brain is like, ah, like that's, that hurts right there. Don't do that. You start using all these other compensatory muscles to help you because that's, that's not good. So <laughs> a lot of bodybuilders say you have to be a certain level of stupid <laughs> to be a bodybuilder because you're going against what your brain is telling you that your brain is trying to help you survive and use all these other things. So you have to like willingly choose to be like, no, I want to do it the hard way right now, brain. Right. So that, that intention has to be there and the intensity has to be there, but it doesn't have to be there for a long time. You just need to create that stimulus and get out of there. And you know, you don't need me to be there to do that with you. You know, if you are like working your biceps or not, or if you're kind of half-assing it and you're not really feeling anything. Right. So absolutely. Just, and it's amazing what I discovered over all these years that I, the time that I actually am focused on exercise is so much less than when yeah. I was doing it, the chronic cardio VS right. way. It seemed like I had to work out two, three right. hours a fucking day. Right. It's like you get your whole life back. <laughs> you get your whole life back. And it's amazing how you said like a very intense 25 minute, if that's all you got, Seriously, I, I'm like seeing the results, right? I mean, like, it's just amazing. And, and, to, and I sometimes go, damn me, like, well, how could I have been in that other mindset before? And I know weight seemed daunting to people, but I'm telling you, man, it's like, 
it's it's just been such a game changer. So anyway, I just it can I just get so to- fun too. It, 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 trust me, I hated it at first. Yeah. Okay. I was like, well, how is this a better workout than me going and running for thirty minutes? Right. So I would resist it and resist it and resist it and resist it. And I'm telling you, like you can get there. It, it's a slow process because you got to create to enhance your neuronal connection to those muscles. Right now, it probably kind of sucks, and that's a huge longevity thing too. Think about it. Your nervous system, your electrical system is weak in connection to your muscles. So if you're going to the gym and you're not ever stimulating that your lights are slowly going out, look what happens to older people. Look at them. And this is what, this is how Mark talks about organ reserve too. Right. So I, I love that concept, but it's basically that it's like, you aren't requiring your body to use those muscles anymore. So eventually it's just going to be like, okay, I guess we don't really need to until you die. (laughs) <laughs> you just become really weak. When you situation. give your muscles a vacation, they take a vacation. You give your lungs a vacation, then they won't expel the sputum after you yeah. break your hip and you're in the hospital. So you don't die of the broken hip. You die of the pneumonia, right? right? You know, yes. or some other limb gets affected because yep. it just doesn't yep. have yep. the demand yep. to create the bone density. So, okay, yep. moving on. Let's talk, let's, let's talk about mindset. There's a, sure. first of all, let's talk about mindset with health, because I know you and I have heard every objection in the freaking book, every excuse, every mindset trip up that keeps people from moving forward. Yeah. Um, and you were there once, so you Mm -hmm. know this, right? So aside from the one you mentioned earlier about being in the gym and just having to go, Hey, everyone starts somewhere. I don't care that I look like a jerk in my t-shirt and, you know, basketball shorts. What are some classic ones that people out there right now, you know, they don't want to, they know they have to, Mm -hmm. they don't want Mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. You just nailed it with your tone. And that's having a victim, (laughs) a victim approach to making big moves for yourself. It, like huge. So whether it's your nutrition or it's working out, if you even teeter into the tiniest space of like, Oh, I wish I could have pizza, but I guess I gotta be on this diet. Or if you're like, Oh man, I gotta go work out again. You're never going to make it never. Good luck. I'm sorry. You're not, you're going to keep because, because what's going on that power has to come from the inside or you are not going to make it through the difficult moments that are the ones that make all the change. So for example, let's say that you are, you're, you're working on your nutrition. Everybody has, they have what I consider a, um, like a breaking point <laughs> and it's the same breaking point. And I, and I, and I make an analogy to running with this. If I'm, when I'm running training for a marathon, which by the way, low carb and lifting weights helped me make it to the Boston marathon, which I never, ever, ever thought I would be able to do. I had failed so many times. I was at this threshold nine minutes short. Like it it took me nine minutes longer than my time. Couldn't make it go low carb, start lifting weights. Boom. I qualify with 17 minutes to spare. Okay. So like little side, and I want to put a note that your interview on Abel James fat burning man podcast, where you talk a little bit more about that experience is a great interview. So if people are interested to hear a little bit more on that, go listen to that podcast or watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, so, so running, if I'm training for a distance race and I'm up to on my long run day, I've run 11 miles and then it's the next week and I'm trying to go 13 miles. Guess how, guess when my breaking point happens at 11 miles. It's like all of a sudden everything's easy, breezy, breezy. As soon as I pass what I've already been to now, it's like, gosh, dang, man, I'm feeling my legs, my lungs, like, because I haven't pushed past that point in a while. Right. So the same thing with nutrition, you, how, who can relate to this? Who, who can not relate to this? It's like, you're trying, okay, let's say you're trying to lose body fat. Cause that to me, that's, to me, that's the hardest one, right? <laughs> it's this difficult for most people, obviously. <laughs> and look at America, right? So you have like three or four days that you're good. And then what is it for you? Day five, day six, day seven. What is it? Is it Friday night? Is it Sunday goodies with the family? Like, what is it? What's your breaking point? You have that same one over and over, or maybe it's, um, you know, when you go to social events, Events. Maybe it's after social events, whatever it is. There's like this thing, this little like hiccup that keeps holding you back. So, um, with, when it, when it comes to, to mindset with food, what I, what I've learned and, and training, but food, especially food is food is the harder one for sure. Um, is that you have to change what your perception of normal is. You have to change what you're wanting. This internal drive has to become I want to nourish my insides. And sometimes that's loving love and nurturing love. And like, here's all the salad and the, and the nut Brad's new nut butter is really freaking amazing. And 
<laughs> and all, you know, like sometimes it's really nourishing like that. Just like a mom, I call it being your own mom. And sometimes it's tough love. Sometimes it's, you know what? It's nine o'clock right now and you don't need food and you're going to feel crappy tomorrow if you eat a bunch of food right now. So like get through your discomfort. I know you're mad. I know you're acting like a little toddler and you want it. Ugh, you want it. You want to stomp your foot and throw your little temper tantrum when you're going to get over it. And you're going to feel amazing when you wake up the next day. So that's a, a big mindset component for me is like, it's got to, first of all, like your, your desires need to be coming from a place of empowerment from the inside, not feeling victimized of like, Oh, I wish I could, I wish I could have that, but I'm trying to lose weight right now. If you're in that mindset, you are not going to have the power, the, the auto power, the self-generated power that's going to be needed to get you through difficult moments. Because you obviously haven't tipped over into the higher scale of self-love versus the other at that point, because mm -hmm. at that, right. Cause it, cause right. then you would be in the nourishing, like, no, this is good. You know, like you would be so happy about it and you can get there. Um, you know what yeah. I love? Can you talk, can you talk also? No, I know you've, I look, I mean, anybody can tell already, like if you work with Tara, you get, you get like, it's like the full treatment. Uh, but talk about the tip. I love the 10 o'clock Tara. Yeah. Talk about that tip. Cause you know, that's one we talked about a little bit, but these are things that again, there's little skills and tips where we've all been through it and just someone out there will need to hear that right now to, to know what to sure. do. Yeah. So, and this started the way this started before it got to 10 o'clock, Tara, this was a foundational move for me and my nutrition, right? The, all, all of the stuff that got me from point A to point B with nutrition of losing 40 pounds, completely changing my body composition, going from probably, I would say like 40% body fat to 11% body fat, which is a huge body composition change in a year and a half too. Right. So you know, what got me there was freaking mindset changes. Okay. And so this one started with, at the time I was still a stay at home mom and the habit that we had built into our family was on Sundays. We made baked goods always. And sometimes in the middle of the week too, because if you're running out, <laughs> we need more cookies, we need more brownies. Right. So, um, I was still, while I was on that fitness journey, still doing that with my kids. I just wasn't eating them. Right. But then what would happen? Like the next day, there's a big old pan of like frosted brownies, like, oh my gosh, mid morning or mid afternoon. Like, do you know how delicious that thing looked? And I'd be staring that thing down and I'm like, mm, that looks so good. And I would think to myself, okay, imagine that you already ate it. You just ate it. We just, you just got done. You just ate a whole bunch of it. How do you feel right now? <laughs> That's how I made my decision. I was like, I feel like crap right now. Okay. So what can you do instead? I don't know. I'm going to go for a walk. <laughs> I'm going to get the heck out of here. Right. So looking forward and decision-making like that of like, I just did it. I already did it. How do I feel that slowly evolved into this 10 o'clock terror concept. And I use it honestly for so many things. Like, um, I use it in like, uh, frankly, like dating life. Um, I use it in like who, like, you know, late at night when you're, maybe you're at a get together and people are like, let's go do this crazy thing. And it's going to cause you to stay up later. I'm like, mm, how do I feel I, now? I'm imagining it's 10 o'clock the next day. How do I feel about that choice that I made? If I truly can say like, yeah, I feel good about that. This is a worth it scenario. Then I will do it. But if there's like this little, like mm, resistance in me, this is, that's like, dang it, dude, why'd you do that? I don't do it. And it's the same thing with food, right? So think about that. Think about how, imagine you already did it. Cause I'm telling you that mouth pleasure only lasts for what? Five minutes max, probably less a few minutes, like two minutes of mouth. It's pleasure. such a cheap trick. It's right. Such <laughs> and it's so easy to do. We've all done it. It's so easy to be like, yeah. Damn it. yeah, dang it. But, um, but I would say like, just start practicing that because that will infiltrate into other areas of your life too. And just helping you learn how to make choices that are in your boat, your own self-interest long-term versus just what you feel like impulsively doing in the moment. It really does trickle into your whole life. So it's a really worthy thing to practice with yourself with food so that you can ingrain those kind of habits of thinking long-term versus short-term impulse. Yeah. The long-term game, the long game. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the longevity game. Let's, uh, let's talk more about mindset in terms of, you know, we, we, we've done, you know, episodes on body image and things like that, but if you could give us like your top, your, your all top, like how you would look at someone who's trying to change their health and our body and how that relates to mindset. I don't even mean mindset. We could talk about childhood trauma. We could talk, if you want to tell a little bit of personal experience about how, some kind of something in your past and having to do the work through it related to your current value of your own body and health now. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I guess I can tie those all together because yeah. what I hear right now in like the self-love space, 
is honestly kind of mind boggling to me because I'm like, that's not even close. That is not even close. Well, like we're so, because we've been like beating ourselves up and we've been so focused on aesthetics for so long, we've pendulum swung into this, like, in my opinion, very like low level immature mindset of like, I am enough no matter what, like I am enough. And it's like, dude, of course you're enough. Like you're way more than enough though. Like that's not even close that that that's junior kindergarten level in my opinion to where we can get with our bodies so what what i've looked at and and yes i've been there i mean from childhood like sexual abuse emotional abuse neglect uh poverty physical abuse i had all those things right i had all those traumas and like a lot of yes a lot of the body stuff i started getting chubby when i was in third grade right so if anybody grew up kind of chubby like you know those feelings of like basically not feeling like you fit in socially or not feeling like boys are ever going to like you or like that. That's a, it's a, it's a tough it's real. situation that's to real be in stuff. as a kid. Mm -hmm. Um, you know what, by PS, you know, what helped me get a lot of my weight off was freaking roller skating in high school. <laughs> I that, that, that actually was when I looked, it's so funny <laughs> you said that because the other day I said to my friend, I go, I know this is a crazy idea, but because gyms aren't open to stuff, do you want to get some roller blades and start blading and stuff? Mm -hmm. Cause I was mm -hmm. like, cause you know what? I remember I was like in really like that really kicked it for me. That's so mm -hmm. funny. Me too. Yeah. Roller skating middle school, sixth grade is when I started. I freaking fell in love with roller skating. It's kind of a thing now. I follow a lot of roller skating counts on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> um, like Jones and Jones and for some skills. I've, I've there. seen some stories on Instagram of you at the rink with the kids. You're yep, rolling in there. Yep. I'm trying. I'm trying to learn my skills. <laughs> but um anyway, like for me, the um the thing with the body that I never realized that like it truly, and, and it, this was a gift that has come to me from being a health professional, right. And learning about the human body. I mean, I'm right before this podcast, I'm sitting here researching, deeply researching like lipid proteins. <laughs> okay. Like, right. so I, <laughs> I yeah, love, you geek out on it. Yeah. Yeah I, yeah. I love, I love the human body. And once you start to learn about it at a deeper level and anybody listening to this, I'm pretty sure you're a little bit of a health <laughs> obsessed nerd, or you wouldn't be listening to primal blueprint or you're looking for answers. But like when you, I, I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, but as you start to see the human body for the miraculous creation that it is, it shifts so easily to me. It like obliterates this, like I am enough and this Uber hyper focus on aesthetics. Now, of course we all have like some desire to look good. Of course, like that's innate. It's part of our sexuality. It's part of, you know, being a human being, like we all, all want to look good, but that comes as an after effect when you can look at and marvel at this pinnacle of all creations, this biotechnical suit that is like the most incredible creation that has ever been made. Because in my opinion, it is because it links up to freaking human consciousness. It links up to consciousness. It auto generates. It lives for like a hundred years. It can heal. It renews. It's, um, it's a super highly adaptable. I mean, it is a cool vessel that we live in. It is a cool machine. Like, and if you had something like all of our cool sports cars and all that stuff, we always hear sports cars analogies, but that stuff pales in comparison. They are all clunkers. Every single one of them. Uh, a Tesla is a clunker compared to the human body. It can't, does it have skin? <laughs> Does it have like all a lymphatic system and all these crazy symptoms sy systems that we don't even understand how they work because they're so complex. They're so above our pay grade. So when I start to look at the, at, at the body like that, it makes it really easy. It's like, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to do everything I can. Like every time I go to eat, like I just had my, I'm doing one meal a day right now. And I just had my, my feast and everything. Like there was a part of me that wanted just like some low carb pancakes. Cause that sounded like goody, goody gumdrops. So I was like, ah, that's not enough nutrients. Like I need to get like more. So I ate some spaghetti spaghetti squash and, uh, rep provisions, grass fed beef and some, uh, pasta sauce. And like, you start to get that mentality of like, here you go, body, here you go. What else do you need? I got you. I'll help you. And it fasting becomes easier. Cause you're like, I know this is good for you. Like, I want this for you. Um, exercise becomes easier. Cause you're like, I know this is good for you and you need this. I'll go through the discomfort so that you can be optimized. Right. And when you get that mindset of honoring the human body for what it is like body image stuff, it starts to fall away for me, like that mindset, my body, I'll be real, like aesthetically, my body looks better than I could have ever imagined in my wildest dreams, because I put this mindset in place, this self-loving mindset where I'm honoring and nurturing run 20 miles. It's not pancakes and candy and cupcakes. Like what the heck? My body just went through so much crap. It needs vegetables and phytonutrients and blueberries and proteins and 
you get there that now the decisions have become easier because they're based in what is actually love and not in not enoughness, pressure, all these low vibe vibrations that cause you to make decisions that aren't in your own best self interest, because you're seeing like what you can get away with, how much you can handle You're you've got this dissonant, you're disconnected from it. Like that's, that's not, you can get there if you're like really sad. I've seen really sad people get there that way. <laughs> they like hate themselves so much that they're going to, but they end up in the same place that they started they end up sad so it's not like if you can flip flop that and you can start honoring your body and seeing it for the amazingness that it is your choices will start to follow suit right it's just like any other relationship you want to have a healthy beautiful relationship with someone you start seeing the good in them you start honoring them for who they are it makes you then want to do kind things for them say kind things be with them right so if you start it in love just like any other relationship respect honesty communication all that the whole game just gets exponentially better than you ever could have imagined yeah and you know i was thinking about years ago i had a friend who went out on a date with a very fit pretty woman and they're out on the date and she's she starts drinking a lot and he's like okay all right all right um and then um i guess she probably had too much and she just starts bawling crying and she's like kind of drunk and she like lifts up her shirt and she had a big scar she had had the gastric surgery mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. she had not dealt with a mindset yet part of it right yeah. like you can go and do all that yeah. stuff but that's she's still suffering. Right. So yeah. I think, you know, the reason Tara and I started kick-ass life podcast was to get everyone in on the mindset game yep, and try yep. to get people excited about this kind of stuff, because you can go the other way and lose the weight and look, and this girl, you would never know. You would never know. She had by like, was obese ever. She looked fantastic. Like right. but she hadn't done the other work. The doctors totally. did the doctor part. They did the Western medicine doctor part. She had the control she's restricting. And here she is crying and bawling, crying because of her scar. And she's still embarrassed about this old self that she's not anymore, but she still is on the inside. Can you touch on that? Yeah. Um, so I, Dr. Joe Dispenza says like, if you want to build a new personal reality, you have to build a new personality. You literally have to become a different person if you want to live in a new personal reality. And this is the big, I'm so glad you brought this up because this is the biggest thing is everybody want, we, you, there has to be foundational work that is done in your soul in your psyche and your actions then come into place. But everybody wants to skip that stuff. Yep. They want to go straight into the action. Give me a meal plan. And I just want to be like, how many times does that work for you? You want, mm -hmm. you want to, you really want a meal plan? Okay. Like you just want me to give you a meal plan and a training plan. You think that's going to work for you this time after the 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 other times didn't work because you haven't changed your perception of normal. And it's these self-defeating habits. It's coping mechanisms. And it's also truly literally just what you perceive as normal because you haven't expanded your mindset. If you're not doing anything to dive into why like human behavior and why we do the things that we do and what it, that is at a core level, you're all you're doing. It's, it's, it's kind of like, it would be like me, like not having any foundational knowledge and trying to go live in some other tribal culture and just keep up with all the things that they do. I wouldn't know. I would fail. I, it would be a mess. I have no idea. I have no foundation. You would be ostracized no, from the Yeah. <laughs> I have no understanding. And guess what I would want to do? Get the hell out of there. I would want to get out of there as fast as possible, you know, because like it would be so uncomfortable for me because I have no, I have not fit, like done any of the base work in order to prepare me for that experience. So, um, there's for me, what I like to do with people is like, let's take a look, let's at least start. So I, I mean, my clients go through a, um, a, a personal development process, but if, even if you're not going to do that, like if you're just listening to this and you're, and you're like, okay, what I can't recommend enough is for you to at least start tracking your patterns, track your patterns. And I'm talking on a mental level and also on an actual physical level. Okay. So for example, what's your thing? What's your problem? What's, what's that, what's that thing you keep doing that you wish you would stop doing? What happened? Do you even know? 
do you even realize that you have patterns? Because I promise you have patterns. Okay. So the first step is becoming aware of what they are. And what is it? Like get super curious. And meditation is the key to all of this. If you're going to be able to like extract your yourself from a third person point of view and look at yourself from like up higher and look and observe your patterns, you got to start meditating consistently to be able to get good at this. Okay. I know it's like forever. I was like, yeah, I sort of meditate. No, I don't. <laughs> right. Uh, I did that game for a lot. Right. I'm sure a lot of you've been on the roads. Like you got the headspace app or like you, you dabbled in meditation and you just, you don't do it. <laughs> okay. So the, for me, the only way I will do it is if it comes first, as soon as I wake up and there's, so, yeah, I've been doing it consistently for over two years now. There's so many more morning, mornings. I don't want to do it, but it's just like, you sit your butt down and you freaking do it. I just, you could use insight timer app is a great one guided. Awesome. I like to do silent now. Um, but I just tell Siri to set a timer for 10 minutes. I sit my butt down and you just do it That's it. And it's a good practice for you to learn how to just do stuff like that and sit still and not do all the things, things, things that you want to do. It will also help you with impulse control in your eating. But as you start to observe your patterns, you know, like, what is it? What do you start telling yourself? What are your go-to clutch, super intelligent reasons that you can't do this thing anymore when it got hard? Is it like, well, I don't think I ate enough today. Or, um, I don't know. I mean, like, maybe I'm just like being too selfish. I shouldn't focus on myself. I think I'm getting obsessed with it. I don't think it's good. Like, I think I should not do this anymore. So there's these really intelligent, like, it's usually like I'm doing something bad. So I shouldn't go for this anymore. That really gets you out quick. That's a really common one. Um, kids, family members, friends, they can be real quick. It's like, you know what? I just need to go beat. I just need to, I, I don't need to do that today. I need to be with my kids or whatever. Your kids are fine. They can wait for 45 minutes while you work out. They'll be just fine. Right. So I'm a single mom of four. I, and trust me, if you're apologetic about it and you're feeling bad about it they're then they're going to feel bad about it. But when you're not apologetic, Hey guys, I'm going to go to the gym. I'll be right back. Clean the kitchen while I'm gone. <laughs> This better be clean when I get back. <laughs> well, now the tables have turned, haven't they? So don't be apologetic about it and don't Love use it. them as an excuse either. It's good for them to learn some skills. Um, yeah. And on that note, let's talk about when you're in family situation. I've had to have this conversation with a few people who have blamed or been like, well, if my husband would just stop or they yeah. won't get on board with me, I'm sorry. They are not supposed to get on board with you and you better not be trying to convince them to get on board with you. Cause you can't even yeah. convince yourself yet, girl, convince yourself first and live by example. It will happen, but you have to own it for yourself. You have to be an environment. You cannot expect people to not bring that cake in the house. You can ask them. You could say, Hey, yep. I, for the first couple of months, it's going to be tough. If you guys don't mind either hide stuff from me or don't bring it in, but they still might anyway, let them live their life. You got to do yeah. you right. Touch on that. Cause this is a big excuse. One, learn how to communicate. Gosh, like if you're, if you're blaming and there's like all this antagonistic attitude between your spouse and you, as you're going through your fitness goals, right. learn how to communicate. And that might be, you new. had that, you, you know, this, you oh, had yeah. that a little bit, right? So oh yeah. 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 Share yep. that it with caused, us a little bit. Yeah. It caused problems for sure. Like, um, he was not on the same mission as I was and I had to learn to now, if I could go back, I would have communicated more. I would have shared my heart a little more. I think that's really important if you have a spouse, because think about it, like imagine you don't want to get into health and fitness and you got a spouse now that all of a sudden he's the keto guy and he's like doing all these workouts and he's got this personal trainer and this mindset coach. And you're like not doing any of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm put yourself in his shoes for a second or her shoe, vice versa, vice versa. Right. Like it doesn't mean they have to choose to do it, but communicate from your heart space. So it doesn't come across as this, like I'm better than you now <laughs> kind of vibe. Right. <laughs> Cause yes. that's, that can, that's easy for it to kind of go into that space. Right. And what I see often is like when that, now I will say, I have been so amazed by how many, uh, I work with women right now, but how many supportive husbands there are out there that it's like really beautiful. Oh. Seriously. Sometimes it just makes me want to cry. Like yep. the woman is like, I don't know if I should do this for myself. He's like, it's good. Do it for yourself. You know, I'm like, okay, there's a lot of beautiful couples out there. Yeah. Um, but when there is this situation where it's like resentment and non-support and the other person doesn't want to change one communicate from your heart. I could have done a better job at that. The one that I <laughs> did do a pretty good job at, um, is just like, you have to choose you at some point you have to do what is right by you, or you're going to end up resenting them. So just communicate that like, this is really important to me. So I'm going to do this. Okay. 
Like, and that's right, it. Like, you don't have to do it. Permission. I'm not going to guilt you for not doing it, but I'm doing <laughs> totally. it. Totally. But I'm doing it. Yeah. Totally. Right. And that's, that was the vibe that I, that I did. I was just like, you, you, I'm no pressure. Like, please, I'm not judging you or anything like this is really important for me to do for me, you know? Um, so definitely, definitely advise like communicating as much as possible, but also no, like you don't have to, I, if there's anything I don't recommend is self-sacrifice. I cannot stand the, the energy of self-sacrifice. That is not a high vibrational energy. We think it is our egos like that. But if you feel like you're self-sacrificing, you are not actually in a place of love. You're in a place of duty and obligation and which breeds resentment. So make sure that like, if you're, that you're owning whatever you're choosing, if you're not going to go to the gym to spend time with your family, that's your choice. That's not them. That's not their fault. That's you choosing that. And if you're choosing to go to the gym and set that example and do right by you, you're choosing that. So own that. And none, none of this self-sacrificing BS, because that only breeds more resentment, anger, low vibrational energy. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, uh, as far as like, it, as far as it goes on making those mindset changes, when like you're in a non-supportive environment, like everybody around you is still doing the old habits. I, I, I just got to say, like, you can still do it. You can, like I had, I had, that's exactly you what did I did. You did it around four kids and a husband who were not on board at all, eating all the stuff, not on board at all. And I was like, okay, I'll, like, I'll still get you guys your stuff. You want this, like you eat, you, there's no judgment, but I'm doing this for me. Like you can do it that way. And sure, like in-laws, everything. It's like, it's, it's a weird, it's a weird shift to go from, from when you're changing all these habits, because there's a lot of like jealousy, judgment, uh, rude comments, but it's combined also with admiration in a weird way. So it's like, it's a very bizarre it's an admiration that turns into them sort of self-hating too. Cause then they start to feel a little bit bad about them. So like, it, again, mm -hmm. it's like you lost your drinking buddy. Right. So yeah. it's kind of like, yeah, you kind of might have to expect that, but I'm telling you, if you can pull out self-love enough to continue forward in it, and you can always invite, like, don't push it on people. That is the most annoying energy ever. Right. Like, do not be like, yeah, you should do it too. Like, oh my gosh. Um, but just invite, just tell them how awesome you're feeling or bring a healthy salad to the family dinner, like bring all the stuff, show them, you know, and like, you know, don't be snooty about it, but just bring that love and show that example. And it will breed more um, positive energy than anything, but also no, like, yeah, you're not going to be supported by people who are in different energies than you are most of the time. Like they don't understand it or they'd be doing it themselves. Right. So you can't expect them something from them that they don't have to give. They don't get it or they'd be there. So just be kind, be compassionate, you know, but no, just know, like if you're making big changes for yourself, that's, that's going to happen. That's part of the game, but just own it. Just be full of love. Just be full of like giving an example and kindness and compassion for others. And you'll just keep going up in, in your energy to the point that like it, you don't, you don't, you don't really need anything from them. <laughs> you know, you don't need that support. It's like, I got it. And I can be a strength and an anchor for you guys. If you want my help, otherwise all good in the hood too, to each their own. It's all of our own life journey. Everybody can go their own path, but this is the path I'm going and I'm owning that and I'm loving it. And I'm happy to share. And the doors are wide open on this end. If you have any questions, that's just kind of how I approach that. So in wrapping up, and I, I think we'll, we, we're going to have to have you back again because I just want to do an episode solely based on all the keto keto pitfalls, the keto mm -hmm. in and out, but you've got a keto in and out program. You do private coaching. You've got your podcast. We're going to put all the notes to, you know, to connect with you, but tell us how can we work with you? If people are listening, they're like, I want to talk to Tara and I need your help and fix my shit. I need my, <laughs> I yeah, need sure. Help. I need help. <laughs> so if you're, if you're wanting to enhance your metabolism, my, my position in the keto community is do keto, not forever. Right. So I love the ketogenic diet. I believe it's a tool for us to get to back to a place of balanced metabolism. I love a low carb approach compared to the standard American diet. So if you want help with that, my keto in and out membership is on my website. It's coachcharagarrison.com. You can just get monthly meal plans and training plans that match whether you're keto or low carb so that they go together. So that's key is making sure that those energy systems match each other so that you're not like spinning your wheels and fighting against and working out in a way that requires carbs when you don't have the, uh, the nutrition to really support that or, or complement that. Um, and then if you, if you're a woman and you'd like to work with me one-on-one -on, -one on mindset training and nutrition, you want all the one-on-one -on -one. we go deep, baby. I love going deep. We have DNA analysis, blood work, hair, mineral tests, 
um, heart rate variability. Like we look at everything and then we deep dive into your psychology as well to see what's holding you back on the mental and emotional that's higher women who rise. And that's also, um, on my website, you just click work with me and you can request a call with me for free to see how I can help you with that. Um, and then other than that, I'm on the Instagram land all day long. So come find me and coach Sarah Garrison. I'm really active on stories and I, sh- I love to share. So I share as I mean, much even as if you just took your phone to the gym and watched like scroll through Tara's, uh, pr- pr- profile, you wouldn't even need to know any, you just do just watch some of her videos. And be like, okay. <laughs> I'm going to pick up that way. And start doing yeah. I that. love to share. I love to share. It's so fun. Um, so, yeah, I also come, think too, well, let's throw it out here right now as well. So, you know, Tara and I have kick-ass life podcast. It's youtube.com forward slash kick-ass, kick-ass life podcast. She also has inside out health with coach Tara Garrison, where she interviews people just like I do here, uh, which is available also on Apple and everywhere else, but on her website. And also let's just throw it out. You know, we briefly mentioned it don't have enough time, but Hey, you mentioned rep provisions. They're offering now 15% off, which is more than they offer anybody. And that is regenerative agriculture, grass fed, amazing quality meats, bone broths, et cetera, uh, pecan butter. And that code is just kickass life rep provisions.com. And then also primal Mm -hmm. kitchen, 10% off using kickass life as well. And same with paleo Valley using it's 15% off, I believe. Right. Yes. Yes, it is. You can go to paleovalley.com and use code kickass life for that too. So lots of really good opportunities to get some cheaper, less, you know, supplements and good meat and all that kind of stuff to get on your journey. And then we'll put everything to connect with Tara in the show notes. Thank Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right, everyone. We'll see you next week.